Hello, everybody, and welcome to the CPM Career Path Modernization Project Employee Forum. Um, before I turn it over to Kathy Gallucci for an introduction, um, I just wanted to provide a few tips for the session today. Uh, first of all, closed captioning is available um, by enabling it on your computer by clicking the live transcript button and then selecting show subtitles. Um, if you have any technical issues during the presentation today, please feel free to use the chat to contact our hosts and panelists, uh, and we'll try to work with you and, and figure out whatever uh, support you might need. And finally, uh, later in the presentation, um, we'll be discussing some of the uh, questions that have been submitted uh, in advance of the sessions today by our community. Uh, but if you have any questions that come up during the presentation, please feel free to submit those in the chat. Uh, we may not have time to address them live today during the presentation, but we will be saving them and they will inform us um, to help on our website. We can uh, look at them for FAQs and future forums and other communications to ensure that those questions uh, get answered. So with that, I will turn it over to Kathy. Thank you, Sam. I'd like to welcome everybody today. I'm Kathy Gallucci, the Chief Human Resource Officer uh, for the University of Rochester, um, newly appointed. And I'm, I'm absolutely delighted that one of my um, first opportunities here is to um, introduce the compensation leadership team who are going to talk with you about the Career Path Modernization Project and really introduce, I think, to all of you in this employee forum, um, some of the foundational um, things that we've been doing to prepare to move us forward. Um, this this um, work is going to be transformational um, and we're very excited um, that we're going to create this new foundation um, that really is going to help us in a number of different ways, but specifically for all of our employees, it's going to really create the foundation for our, uh, the, our recruitment, uh, the way that we um, do our workforce and succession planning, performance manage it, management, and most importantly, um, creating career paths and professional development opportunities for our staff that are transparent and visible and help um, our employees self-actualize at the University of Rochester. And so I'm not going to delay any further. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dan Salamone, who is going to begin the presentation. Dan is our um, Senior Director for University Compensation. Um, following Dan, Sonia Garlington, our Director of University Compensation, will, um, will review her slides and then Dan and Sonia will take us through the Q&A. I'd like to again thank everybody for joining us and um, Dan over to you. Excellent, thank you Kathy. I'm very excited to be here, very uh, happy to finally be at a point where we can, uh, can share some of the foundational work that's been happening around the Career Path Modernization Project with uh, our larger community. This is the first of a series of employee forums that we'll host. Uh, we've got four more in this particular round of employee forums scheduled for the next few uh, days and weeks. We're uh, looking forward to getting the message out there to the, uh, the largest uh, community we possibly can and uh, would certainly ask for your help uh, in spreading the word that these forums are happening to your friends and colleagues if, you, uh, if, if they are unaware. Um, I, won't, uh, I won't spend too much time here. I do want to introduce sort of the topics for today's, uh, today's session. Today, we really are gonna focus on establishing a good sort of baseline for everyone uh, around what the project intends to accomplish. Uh, and we'll do that by way of, of these six agenda items. So first and foremost, Kathy's walked us through some of the introductions. Uh, I'll introduce myself and I'll ask Sonia to do the same. Uh, pretty soon here. Uh, we also are going to talk a bit about what led us here. How did we get to this point in, in our history? Uh, we'll talk about the CPM project from an overview standpoint. We'll discuss the status of the project, the timeline uh, at a high level, and the various phases that are associated with, with making this, this project a success. Uh, and helping everyone uh, to, to work through what will ultimately become our new job uh, and classification structure and system. We do have some questions and answers that we'll go through a little bit later on. 
and then we'll round things out by uh, discussing some of the other ways that you can engage with the project uh, and stay current and, and up to speed on the many things going on CPM related today. So you've already met Kathy. Uh, Kathy is our Chief Human Resource Officer and certainly very key, uh, a very key leader in helping us drive forward this new initiative. Uh, I am Dan Salamone, the Interim Senior Director for the University of Compensation. I've been here at the U of R for almost six years now, it'll be six years next month. Uh, have worked mainly with uh, in the medical center areas, supporting and, and working closely with the HR business partners on the many different things that uh, that come up uh, day to day in the medical center. Uh, I've also uh, had the the privilege of working on some compensation uh, initiatives prior to this uh, for the university and for the medical center. And we are very excited to welcome Sonia Garlington to the team. Sonia uh, joined the university in October of last year. Uh, you'll be hearing from her shortly, as Kathy mentioned, and, uh, and has been a fantastic addition to the team. She's coming in at just the right time to help us uh, navigate this change and ensure that this project is a success. Sonia's background uh, is, is pretty extensive in the world of compensation and came to us from another university, so certainly uh, proving to, to be a great mind uh, on this, this effort as we look to contemporize our system. So we'll start with a bit of our current reality. And I think many people are aware of, of where we are today, but just to kind of center us all around, uh, around what ultimately is driving the need for this change, it's really the idea that we have now a structure that is several decades old. Uh, and with that comes some challenges. So when you think about the university or even the external marketplace for, for jobs uh, several decades ago, you know, you think about it in, in, in the reality that it probably looked a lot different than it does today. And the landscape, you know, shifting has created some challenges that are, are you know, ultimately hindering our ability to plan and manage and compensate and really ultimately develop and engage our staff. Uh, and there are three sort of primary uh, factors or components, uh, you know, at play today that we really need to consider. The first of which is the the idea or the reality that our outdated stru uh, structure, our outdated job structure, and the programs within it uh, really no longer uh, include or encompass all the work being done here at the university. I think one of the things that I've come to appreciate about the U of R is that we have everything from the conventional uh, types of roles to the highly specialized, highly technical roles. Um, and it's actually, it's been very exciting to me as I've kind of navigated my own career here at the U of R to get to meet and interact with people who are, you know, one of a handful of people in the country who do some of the work that gets done here. So I think that as we've grown as an institution, uh, we, we are kind of left in this boat of having a structure that doesn't necessarily represent all the work being done today. We also have many decentralized policies and that creates a lack of transparency. I think one of the things that has stood out to me as, uh, as I've uh, come into the system and kind of grown to understand more fully the compensation and job classification structure that exists here is that it's very difficult to explain to people. And, and part of why it's difficult is because there are so many uh, intricacies, so many differences as we go from one area to another area, so many things that were kind of built up in history over time. And so uh, certainly that's that's a piece of what's contributing to the, the, the challenges we face today. And then the other piece of this is really that we've uh, we've grown this system to a point where it's it's almost an overgeneralization or provides overgeneralization to many of the career paths and opportunities that exist here at the U of R. And an example of that may be that, you know, some of you may have experienced previously or currently, uh, when you go into our job board and you're looking at different jobs, you might find two jobs that have the exact same title, but you read the descriptions and the work seems incredibly different. You know, a big piece of that is because we have uh, a number of jobs within our system that tend to act as those generalized positions that, uh, that become over overutilized and create some of the, the challenges that we're seeing today as people are navigating their careers or trying to. So let's talk about what CPM will ultimately accomplish for us. So the, the whole point of CPM is ultimately to create a new relevant job structure 
uh, that'll impact the ways we hire, pay people, develop our staff, and advance our workforce. When you think about compensation and job structures, ultimately, they act as the foundation for so many of the other HR initiatives and the talent initiatives that exist in an organization, and certainly the U of R is no exception. Uh, really, our job structure uh, acts as or will act as, needs to act as, the, the foundation for our total reward structures. And that's everything from pay and benefits and all the stuff that gets, gets you know, lumped into those two things. Uh, it is absolutely central to ensuring that we have the ability to uh, drive a consistent, equitable, and inclusive organization. Uh, we, we absolutely um, want to make sure that that's central to what we're trying to accomplish in CPM. We've got a number of things that hit on that as a primary focus uh, and, and certainly becomes important for us as we, we move forward. We also uh, want it to be able to act as a foundation for strong workforce planning and succession planning. There's a lot you can do when you have your, your staff aligned to the right job and you know ultimately how a, a role or a person can and should grow through the organization. Performance management uh, ultimately ties into this in the form of understanding how competency and skills tie to performance and what you as an individual or we as an organization can provide and can do to help enhance uh, those skills to achieve better performance over time. And then there's career support and professional development for career advancement that comes from the enhanced knowledge of understanding where a role fits into the organization and what the opportunities for a person in those roles are long-term over the course of their career. So our new job structure uh, will have several different elements that we wanted to just introduce you to today. And keep in mind, these are, this is an example. This is not, uh, this is not necessarily what will be our, our exact uh, structure going forward. Also keep in mind, you know, we're representing a few, a very small amount of job families uh, on this slide. There, the U of R, like I mentioned before, is a very complex place has many, many different types of jobs. So we will inevitably have many, many different types of job families and subfamilies. But when you think about a job, you know, and you think about a career, a pipeline or a, a path for a job or a person in a job to take, there's two different ways you can think about it. There's a, the very broad sense uh, and the very specific sense. So broad being at the job family level. So when you think about your role in the context of the organization, where does it fall at the highest level? Does it fall within finance? Does it fall within the clinical realm, uh, within academic and student services or even HR? Uh, I'll lean on my own uh, job family for a bit here. And you, you can start to get a sense of ultimately at a, from a broad sense, if your intention is to grow along a particular functional path, ultimately you have to understand where your current role fits in that path. And so we move down to a slightly more focused view, which is ultimately the job subfamily. And so looking at this first column here, in the clinical job family, we may have job subfamilies that get us a little bit closer to the work that's being done uh, in different parts of, of the business. So you might be someone who is either in or looking to, to uh, foster a career in the ambulatory space or in imaging or in nursing, et cetera. Same on the academic and student services side. You may be you know, looking at the academic administration or admissions, financial aid. Uh, and then when we lean over to finance all the way on the right, it might be accounting, it might be financial planning and budgeting and so on. And so we can start to get a little bit closer to ultimately understanding the path that's available and where the jobs within that path align from a career stream standpoint, which is that next step in, in getting to the, the more granular level of jobs. And so within a career stream, we start to break down a little bit more specifically, what are the types of roles that exist? So we go from the types of, uh, of functions to the, the, the sort of more specific level of function, and then the, the type of, of work that exists within those functions. They may be clinical, they may be support driven, they may be uh, the professional level, management, executive, et cetera. Uh, and ultimately you can, you can establish for yourself a career that hits on all five of those, those career streams over the course of time. Uh, again, keep in mind, these are, these are examples and, and our actual naming conventions may shift a little bit. Um, but ultimately it's important that you have a sense of where your role today fits into that picture and where the roles you, you hope to achieve for yourself over time fit. 
Uh, and then finally, we make our way down to the specific job level of a role. And this is really aimed at helping people understand the true progression or the hierarchy within a particular job, uh, job subset. So you can see where, you know, right now, if you think about what our current structure looks like, uh, many of you may have experienced or, or currently uh, experienced the challenge in trying to figure out if I'm, if I'm in an administrator one job today and I want to become an administrator two, or I don't really know what, where I can take my career. The hope here is that we'll come out on the other end of the career path modernization project with a very clear depiction of how each role fits into the structure and how the upstream and downstream roles uh, can play a, an important part in you achieving your career goals over, over the course of time at U of R. So we want to shift a little bit into what CPM will ultimately do for us uh, as an organization. So I mentioned previously that it's really about the development organization and implementation of a new job structure with relevant corresponding job profiles. Uh, that truly ref reflect the work being done at the U of R. You know, I, I, I've mentioned this previously, but certainly want to make sure that I, I make it a point to emphasize that one of the challenges that we have today is that we have classifications that, that overgeneralize the work being done. We have to really hone, uh, hone in on what truly is, is, uh, exists in the U of R from a job standpoint so that we can help people understand the opportunity then that exists here as an organization. So we'll do this by creating a structure for employees, um, as, uh, for employees to progress in, uh, in their careers consistent with the organizational needs, right? So we know that as an organization, we have very diverse needs in our staffing complement. We wanna make sure people understand what all those needs are so that you can effectively map out your career within the, the, um, the needed uh, resources. We also wanna give employees the visibility into different career paths to empower them uh, uh, to embark on their own professional development, their own career planning. Uh, we, we know that people may start out in one particular track and decide, you know what, I wanna do something else with my career. I wanna make a shift over to HR, to finance, to the clinical side. Ha understanding the hierarchy of the roles within those areas certainly will, will be helpful to people who are looking to make those shifts. We wanna establish levels and requirements for career progression that will guide growth opportunities. So we really wanna make sure that we're applying consistency. You know, a big piece of this too is that we hear often that people don't quite understand how this job is, is this great on this side and it's that great on that side, or you know, it's, it's this great in this department, but a different one in another. We have to be very um, thoughtful in how we approach the consistency piece of ensuring level uh, leveling in our new job structure to help offset that. And then we need to organize our positions for classification, clarity, and transparency, making sure that people understand what those opportunities are. And we, we've already started to explore and, uh, and, and have, I think, done some great work in uh, understanding the tools we have available to us as an institution to be able to put some of that information uh, out there in an externally facing way, uh, trying to make it as easy as we possibly can for people to get access to that information as they make their plans for their, their own career. And then we ultimately need a compensation system in which pay is assessed relative to the market. So today our pay grades uh, are aligned well with each other, but not necessarily to the external marketplace. And so our hope uh, is to, in the career path modernization, uh, uh, career path modernization project, shift our focus toward that external marketplace, obviously balancing the internal equities and parities that we need but also understanding our ability to be competitive externally. So what CPM will not accomplish for us, what it isn't, uh, is an effort to change the responsibilities of employees. So uh, certainly we don't want anyone to walk away from this forum or future forums with the impression or the idea that CPM is going to change the responsibilities of their role. And it's actually the, the other way around. The responsibilities of each employee are gonna help inform us how things need to be structured uh, in this, this, new, this new state. So certainly wanna make sure that people understand that. Uh, we don't intend that this, uh, that this project contribute to the reorganization of departments or, or units. Uh, you know, certainly our, our goal is to get the structure laid out in a way that's accurate and transparent, uh, not in a way that forces reorganization. Uh, the same, uh, we want to ensure that the, the um, the same training or individual career uh, planning, uh, I'm sorry, career development and planning 
Um, it's not, this is not about career. Uh, this isn't, this won't provide the training for you to develop your career. We do have and have kicked off a number of other initiatives uh, in HR that will, that will piggyback off of this particular uh, a project that will will be far more focused on actual development and training to help you foster your career over time. We need that foundation to be in place, like we talked about earlier, to do that successfully. And then ultimately, this isn't about savings and budget. It's not. This is not a budget savings initiative, uh, and it's also subsequently not about individual raises or promotions. We want to make sure that we're building a system that's fair, that's equitable, that's understandable, that people who are either in our organization today or looking at our organization from the outside considering coming in understand the structure well enough to know how to navigate within it. So to help inform and to guide this project over the course of time, uh, and, and we do have a pretty extensive timeline, we have pulled together a number of formal committees, and we are also making sure that we are utilizing some of the, the other committees and organizations and teams that exist in the U of R uh, along the way. But formally associated with the project, we have a project leadership team. So you're, you're hearing from a number of us today, um, but certainly there are others that make up our project leadership team within HR uh, to help us ensure that we're doing the right planning and operationalizing the work that needs to happen to make the CPM project project a success. Uh, we also have a project team that's more extensive, kind of takes the project leadership team and expands it to areas that uh, have uh, critical pieces and components of the CPM project that will ultimately make it successful. Uh, it's also, we're utilizing our project team to to further the, the um, early understanding of what the project will uh, ensure from a, project, uh, from a job structure standpoint so that other areas of HR can start building uh, programs to, again, supplement the development and growth of our staff over time uh, in a way that's meaningful. We also have an advisory committee that's made up of representatives from across the university. It was really important from the onset of this project that we ensure we have people representing uh, all, all areas of the organization because we do have some very specific needs in, in you know, many different components of this organization. For example, what the Memorial Art Gallery needs may be very different than what the Department of Pediatrics needs in the medical center. So we wanted to make sure that we had people representing uh, all of the areas uh, in this organization. We also have uh, at a, a slightly higher level, a group of senior leaders uh, making up our steering committee. They are also a cross-functional group that uh, are coming from, again, different parts of the organization with the intent and the, uh, the purpose of helping to inform, guide, and ultimately drive the change that we need to accomplish in order for the CPM project to be successful. We'd encourage you all to, to take some time to visit the CPM website if you haven't yet done so. There's uh, certainly plenty of information there uh, and it, it's a, it will be a growing, a living, breathing website that uh, will house much more information as we develop new components and phases. But there is also a list of the members of each of these groups on that website for your reference. Um, we've also been uh, very, um, very important to us. We're, we've been making the rounds to meet with different groups uh, beyond the leadership team. As we've set the course for the CPM project, uh, we've met with the uh, Genesee Staff Council on a couple of occasions. We uh, have met with various groups throughout the, the, um, the academic areas, the medical center, and we will continue to do that on a more on, on an ongoing basis as the project moves forward, because it is really important for us to ensure that we are taking the time to hear from people uh, who are ultimately um, intended to be affected by this in a positive way uh, over the course of the project. And, and obviously want to make sure that we have a diverse uh, perspective as we as we you know continue down this path. So I'll turn it over to Sonia to take you through the project timeline. All right, thank you, Dan. Uh, so now with an overview of what the pro project is and what it looks to accomplish, we want to get you a little more insight on how are we going to do that? Uh, what are the major phases of the project? 
and sort of what are each of those phases uh, composed of. So our initial phase was actually our compensation philosophy phase. Um, and in this phase, this is where we actually uh, establish um, that document, those guiding principles um, that's supposed to um, guide us as to why do we pay, how we pay. And it, and it needs to be a reflection of um, really our institutional uh, values. So to have that in writing as something that we refer back to uh, when, we, when we're looking to make new policies, uh, programs, uh, looking at our procedures, um, looking at our decision making, to have a document that reminds us uh, why do we pay, how we pay? Uh, why do we want to be where, we, where, where we're seeking to be in the market? What does that have to do with our institutional values? And what does that have to do with um, our goals to, to develop, attract, retain, and engage our employees? Um, what does that compensation philosophy have to do with um, our vision for our, our values such as diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, and our total rewards philosophy? Um, so that's what we've spent um, our initial, the project phase initially working on. We got a lot of great input um, onto our compensation philosophy, again, from those um, project committee team members that Dan talked to you about, um, but also from, um, as we continue to move forward, we'll be getting additional information, or excuse me, additional input um, also from our top leadership, um, our cabinet members, our senior leaders. Um, and then also, um, as Dan talked about um, our desire to make sure this is a project uh, where we seek input and, and promote transparency, um, that'll be sort of a living, breathing document um, that will actually add um, onto our, our human resources website um, for you as the employees to actually take a look at yourself um, and to have that as a reference point and something to refer back to, um, to get a better understanding of how we pay, why we pay, what do we believe in institutionally and how does that manifest itself into our pay practices. Um, structure, leveling and mapping is actually the phase that we're moving through now. Um, this has been a very critical phase where we look at um, what is our job structure now? What are our job titles now? What is the content of our actual job descriptions? Um, as Dan mentioned, we have some work that we know is being done in an institution that maybe isn't accounted for um, in jo the job descriptions that we use and maintain today. So finding out what are those, what are those bodies of work that still need to be captured and documented? Um, so in our structure leveling and mapping phase, um, that's really where we form that framework for what our job structure is going to be in the future. So when Dan talked about uh, the, the job families and the job subfamilies, um, the work that needs to be done in that phase, that's really what we're working through um, right now. So again, we've been doing that also um, in a way that ensures that we get some input from uh, some diverse areas uh, throughout the institution. Um, we had some key uh, subject matter experts. Uh, some key uh, administrators from, the, from all over the institution to participate with us um, and our consultant in workshops where we really worked through our entire job structure um, and tried to just calibrate um, from, from every level of that career stream, where do all the different positions that we have now belong? And again, what positions do we know are out there? What bodies of work are out there that we know we still need to capture? So as we continue to move through this phase, we'll start to capture that type of work as well. So as Dan said, there may be new job classifications. We know there's a need for new job classifications in some cases, and this is a major way of how we're finding those and documenting those is through our, our leveling and mapping. And so once we have our job uh, structure uh, pretty well in place, we'll be moving on to uh, market pricing and assessment. And so this is where we get to uh, work on getting a better uh, alignment to market for our jobs. So we do know that one of our challenges is that some of our jobs are aligned to the market and some of them are uh, not, not as much. And so that is a challenge for us in terms of um, competitive within the marketplace um, and making sure that our jobs are, are appropriately aligned, not only externally, uh, but internally. So our market pricing and assessment phase is going to help us really determine how does our pay currently compare to the market? Um, and then again, going back to our compensation philosophy, well, what does that imply? Where do, in, do we, is that where we wanna be in the market? And if not, what does our compensation philosophy lead us 
uh, once we get the results of that market pricing um, and assessment. And also the pay structure development. So once we know our job structure and once we know where we want to be in the market, um, that's when we can have a new pay structure. So we're very much used to, um, you may very often hear people say, uh, pay grade 52, uh, they're on the U this person's on the UR1 schedule, that job is on the UR2 schedule. We're taking a look at um, redoing all of that um, from top to bottom. So the idea of what our, our, our pay structure is now could look very different depending on the results of our job structure and leveling mapping efforts, as well as our market pricing and assessment. So our pay structure of the future um, will be market aligned. And so it may look very different um, than what we know today. Additionally, we know that part of um, the work we need to do is to actually um, take a look at all our, po our policies, um, our procedures, our standard programs. So when you think about our compensation program, what are the types of main uh, job, the position actions that come to mind, the pay actions that come to mind, um, types of annual programs when you think about compensation. Um, we need to take a look at all of that, um, the policies, the standards, the principles, um, what do we need for the institution of the future? What do we have that's working? What is missing and what needs to be changed? And so that's what we'll be doing in our pay administration's guideline phase, taking a comprehensive look at all of our policies, procedures, standards, um, and our compensation programs. And of course, the last phase is actually um, the implementation. Um, so when we get to that phase where we're actually rolling this out, um, when we know that those things that have to happen from a systems perspective are in place in terms of changing um, the mapping an employee or a job from an old job classification or an old job code to what our job structure and our job codes and classifications look like in our new system, rolling out communications to the impacted employees, their managers, um, providing education, um, and getting feedback and opportunities um, to take a look at here we are in the implementation phase, knowing that it needs to be continuous improvement and getting that feedback and tweaking um, the prog tweaking that work that we've just implemented. Um, the implementation phase will also provide opportunities for individuals or um, who, who, who have um, who need to provide feedback to us. So we do take feedback throughout the entire project, of course. But we do recognize it's really important for employees to have um, an opportunity to just to discuss with managers or supervisors um, their perspectives on where they've been mapped in the new structure. And so in our implementation phase, um, we'll provide an opportunity for that type of feedback as well. So a little bit of more detail on the phases. Uh, the compensation philosophy currently, um, the phase that we're in, is that we are socializing it. And so as I talked about, we're in that structure and mapping phase, sort of overlapping with the end of that compensation philosophy phase. Um, so that's where we're now, at now. We've gotten input from a lot of our stakeholders. Um, we've also uh, developed um, a draft that, again, is consistent with our university's guiding principles. Um, and that's that, that framework for why we pay, how we pay, and what we want to really represent um, our values and principles as they relate to compensation. And so right now, again, we're um, rounding out our socialization, um, looking to present that to our top executives, our top leadership and our senior leaders um, to get their feedback. Um, and again, that's a document that will be uh, part of the, the transparent communications that we'll have available on our website. Um, the structure leveling and mapping. Um, again, the departments, in addition to the work that we're doing, um, we have had input um, not just from our compensation team, our human resources team, um, but also the departments, um, the subject matter experts from the different departments, um, those key administrators from each of the different departments. They've all been a part of the job structure leveling um, and mapping work that we have done. And also, um, as, I, as I mentioned, um, cer certainly a big part of this is um, systems. And so we are, have been working very closely with our HRMS team um, and they have joined us um, in the project to assess what actually needs to happen um, from a systems perspective to put our job structure into place. Um, so if we're changing the way we do job 
um, structuring, mapping, um, leveling, um, the different components of what makes up a job classification or a job code. Um, that all has to go into our, our HRMS system. And so um, they're working very closely with us uh, on the systems per perspective as well. And again, we just recently completed those job structure uh, workshops, actually today. <laughs> um, and so uh, over a course of uh, three different workshops, had a really good opportunity to work very closely with those subject matter experts and those department leaders um, to really calibrate um, and, and get us on a good path to finalizing that new job structure. A um, little more about the um, market pricing and competitive assessment and our pay structure development. Um, we're gonna look for those markets. Um, when we think about um, how do we pay, why do we pay, how, what do we need to pay to be competitive? Who are our competitors? And does that change depending on what the job itself is? Um, so our market pricing assessment will not only help us determine um, where we are at in the market, but who are our competitors and is that where we want to be in the market? And if not, um, how do we position ourselves in the market? And what does that go, what does that have to do with um, particular the particular jobs? Um, does the market um, based upon the market, would that position have a different market than maybe another job? So in that market pricing assessment, it, um, we'll be working very closely, again, not only with our consultant, but as well as our department um, leadership um, to get input on what are those needs that we have um, in our personnel areas and what does that indicate about where we need to position ourselves in the market to meet those needs for the future. Okay, so a little more about our pay administration guidelines. Again, that's when we will be taking a comprehensive look at um, the policies that we have in place right now with relation to compensation and job classification. Um, looking at what is working well for us and looking at what is going to need to change in order to really, again, go back to that compensation philosophy. Do the policies and procedures that we have in place right now actually uh, support what we, st we state in that philosophy as being uh, what we stand for and what our principles and our values are with relation to um, employee compensation. During our implementation phase, again, in addition to um, actually systematizing um, the job structure, um, this is where we're going to try to get, get really get uh, communication to all those different managers and employees who are impacted by these changes. Um, in addition, um, the systems updates would be completed. Um, employees will be clear on what their new job, job title is if the title changes, um, where they sit in a new job structure as well. And of course, the managers will know that as well. The managers will pro be provided also with information that will help them have conversations um, with their staff about the changes that are taking place. Um, and then it's the actual implementation um, of the new job structure and education and information um, around that process. So that's a quick overview of the main phases of the project. Um, again, we're rounding out phase one uh, with our compensation philosophy while also making good progress in phase two where we're doing that job structure leveling and mapping. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, we got a lot of very good questions uh, prior to this workshop or prior to this presentation. Um, so as time permits, uh, we wanted to share with you uh, some, some of those questions as well as, as, well as uh, some answers. Again, if you have questions um, that you'd like to ask, you're free to submit them in the chat. And again, um, in future forums or on our CPM website, um, we will provide responses. And so Dan is actually gonna get us started, I think, with our question and answers. Thanks, Sonia. All right. Um, so these are uh, questions that were submitted um, prior to this session by our members of our community. And so the first question that um, is, what's being done to ensure this new structure is flexible and remains accurate over time? Yeah, so we, we absolutely have come to understand the importance of, of having a system that's flexible, right? I think we've We've kind of seen over the last several, you know, decades, the last, um, you know, the last several years, frankly, in particular, as, you know, and, and certainly right now with uh, everything happening in the marketplace related to COVID, we're seeing absolutely the need to ensure that whatever we build, however we build it, 
it has to be flexible and sustainable over the course of the long term. And so uh, as we look at you know, trying to ensure we don't end up back in the same boat that we're in today, we're, we're paying heavy attention and close attention to um, ensuring that we're, we're putting in place the right parameters, the right protocols, the right um, guiding tools uh, to ensure that we can sustain this over time. We're also um, keenly focused on ensuring that we've got the right compensation philosophy, because at the end of the day, markets change, uh, you know, the organization changes, but your compensation philosophy should act as sort of that anchoring point to all things compensation and, and job structure strategy related. So, uh, so we are spending a bit more time than frankly, I think we had, uh, had initially planned for in getting that you know, to a place that we feel strongly about it, that we feel like it captures the Meliora um, mission of the organization and, and has the flexibility to accommodate us over the, and carry us through the long haul. Uh, we are also investing in things, uh, uh, in ensuring that we've got the right leveling guide so that we can ensure we're looking at jobs along a particular uh, path in the same way, a consistent way. Uh, over time, uh, we're investing in new market surveys so that we can stay relevant and, and ensure that we've got the most up-to-date information as we look to make decisions on pay and pay grades. Over time, we are investing in, I think I mentioned earlier on this call that we have, uh, we have scoped out and have invested in a new uh, job cataloging tool that will, uh, that's intended to help ensure that we have sort of a central repository for our job descriptions. Right now, many people probably have experienced the, the challenge of trying to find a job description for a particular role and really the you know, the, the way that I think most people have kind of worked around the system is to utilize our applicant tracking system where you go and look for new jobs um, to find job descriptions. And that's fine, that's great. You know, obviously it introduces you to some things you maybe didn't know existed at the U of R, but the challenge with that becomes you only then see the job descriptions that are posted at that particular time. And, and again, like I mentioned earlier, jobs do vary significantly from, from one group to another. So we are investing in a tool that will help to ensure we have the ability to uh, kind of put out there for, for everyone to see the job descriptions associated with each of the jobs in the organization, at least at a high level. Obviously, you know, individual departments uh, tend to have their own nuances and each role has its own nuances that are accounted for more locally, but we wanna make sure people understand the, the core or the foundational responsibilities and requirements for every job uh, up front. And so that, that tool will get, um, will, will get built out and will ultimately uh, be rolled out to the organization as a part of CPM in the months to come. Uh, we are, um, we're also trying to do everything we can to ensure that we have the right protocols in place when we need to make changes to our structure, that we're, we, we have protocols that help ensure that we're, again, maintaining that consistency, but we're also considering all the various points of the organization that need to weigh in. So one of the things that the CPM project will also do uh, is put in place a compensation governance committee to, uh, which will again be made up of, of a cross-functional subset of, of senior leaders uh, and will ultimately help us ensure that we're keeping current with our compensation policies and practices and working to, to drive consistency, even though we are a decentralized organization in many ways. So thank you. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Next question is, what can staff expect the impacts of the CPM project or its implementation plan to be on our roles and pay? Do you foresee many staff experiencing changes to their titles and or job responsibilities? So the focus of the project is not about um, purposely and uh, looking to make changes in our employees' um, job responsibilities. Um, it's about us identifying, uh, classifying, and structuring um, the work that's just already being done uh, better than we are doing today and in a way that really supports what we need to do uh, to be competitive and to also clarify the career paths and opportunities um, available for our employees. And so um, in order for us to do that, we have to have the right foundational elements in place so that people can actually navigate their career here. Um, and we have to make sure we do that also in a way that we're relevant to the job market. So we don't expect this to impact um, a staff member's day-to-day -day responsibilities. 
Um, we expect um, you can, to continue to do the work you're doing, but that we're going to do a better job at identifying it, um, classifying it, um, determining what the market rate is for it, um, comparing ourselves to the market, paying competitively, and um, having a job structure that is easy um, for an employee to navigate. Um, so that's what we're looking to do, um, not necessarily to change anybody's um, job responsibilities, just to do a better job at documenting them um, and identifying them and building a structure around them. So we'll develop new ways of categorizing our jobs, as we talked about, um, talking about different job families, job subfamilies, um, and career streams. Um, we're also going to establish um, titling guidelines so that we can be more consistent across the institution um, in the use of job titles and what does that um, infer or what can we understand and have a common understanding about when we hear a particular um, word or job title. Um, we'll be looking to put in um, pr principles um, and best practices to make sure those types of things are consistent across the institution. And so both elements are important um, for us to, again, continue to strive for more transparency um, in, our, in our compensation program um, and to build those career paths and so we can uh, and understand uh, the positions that are actually here at the institution, the work that's actually being done now. And so P, uh, CPM also, um, as Dan mentioned, it's not necessarily to change an individual's pay. It's just to create a structure that will allow for compensation decisions um, to be made um, fairly, equitably, and, and as transparently as possible, um, including um, doing a better job with our salary ranges, um, and, and um, matching our jobs to the market and our, our benchmarks in the industry. Thanks, Sonia. The next question is, how will changes to the job structure be rolled out? And will supervisors and staff be involved in the process to ensure jobs are correctly aligned? I could just stayed on that. I'm going to respond to that one. <laughs> so um, in terms of how the, um, whether or not the work would change the job structure um, or the changes to the job structure and, and what will the supervisor's role and staff role be in that. Um, we're working to make sure um, that our leaders and staff do have access um, to all the information um, and tools that are going to be necessary for them to feel uh, informed, uh, educated, um, engaged and like they participated in the project at those points that are, are really critical for them. Um, so for example, these employee forums are a big way of um, how we aim to do that. Um, we will host more forums um, just like this one um, as we continue to um, bring more individuals into the fold. Again, we encourage you to um, um, invite more inform any of your coworkers um, and colleagues um, so that they can have a, um, they can have um, a, can participate in the forums as well. Um, so as the project continues, um, we're going to do things like providing more updates. Um, we're going to share news, material, resources. And we'll talk a little bit more at the end about um, actually some ways that you can continue to stay engaged with us um, even beyond this forum. Um, we want to help guide the organization through the different um, changes. Uh, we actually have um, engaged uh, change management web, um, change management resources to make sure that um, we do have um, change practices and procedures in place because we know how critical that is to the success of the project. Um, and we also have our CPM website, um, which it it's up and running. It's been developed to be a hub of information um, out to the community but also as a vehicle to provide feedback back to us um, as the project team. And so we'll work through um, the project, ensuring that the jobs are, are aligned. Um, and it, that, that has been an extensive process. Um, it has continued, it, it has started, but it is extensive and it will continue um, because that's, the, that's one of the biggest, um, phase two is one of the biggest and most consequential phases of the project, um, that job structure, the leveling, the mapping. Um, so we're using the workshops, those job workshops that we discussed, um, to test our different elements of, of the job structure, such as what are the actual job families that we need here at the institution, and how do we objectively and fairly um, level those new jobs or level the jobs that we have. 
Um, the workshops are really a very diverse cross-section of leaders from uh, all different parts of the organization. Um, and so later in the project, we'll be making, uh, we'll be also getting uh, input from managers and supervisors um, across the organization as well um, to ensure that the different roles that we calibrated sort of at a, at a high level, at a job structure level, are really effectively aligned um, within those actual departments and with those actual employees doing the work. Um, so supervisors and manager, managers um, across the organization are going to be very critical to um, that that portion of the project where maybe we have gone through and done a pretty good job of identifying what all those job families are and what those different career streams are. But we do understand that at some point, this gets down to an actual department, this gets down to an actual incumbent. And that is where um, we will definitely need the support of our department leaders, our managers and our supervisors to help us calibrate and to make sure we get that right. Thanks, Sonia. The next question is, the role I am in has changed since I was originally hired into it. Will these changes be considered in this project even if my job description has not been updated? Uh, thanks, Sam. So we, we get this question a lot and, and it's a great question because I think ultimately we all understand that over time people's jobs evolve. Uh, they, they do that naturally, they do that by design. You know, there's any number of reasons why someone may have been hired into a job based on a particular job description. And then over the course of time, you know, their role has expanded. Sometimes that happens because uh, there's just plain a need for someone to pick up the extra work. Sometimes that happens as a way of trying to, uh, to provide opportunity and to challenge you know, staff to, to achieve that next level. Uh, and certainly we want to make sure, and we are absolutely doing everything we can to make sure that those things are taken into consideration. That's a big part of the reason why uh, what Sonia just talked about is so important. The, the idea of us going section by section, you know, trying to, uh, you know, work closely with managers and supervisors and even collecting input from individual staff as we go along on the nature of the work and trying to ensure that as we plan for where different jobs become mapped, they're mapped to the right place. And then ultimately, we have to get to a place where you know, we are utilizing less and less those, those heavily generic classifications, which will ultimately mean having to uh, dedicate time to building out new jobs, new job classifications, new, um, new roles for, to, to better represent the work that's being done throughout the organization. Uh, you know, you, I, I gave this example earlier, but I think it's an important one in the context of this question. You know, when, when was the last time you went out and looked at, to see, you know, what, uh, what positions were available and you noticed that two jobs, maybe it's an info analyst, one, uh, as an example, in two different departments had incredibly different responsibilities and, and jobs, uh, job details. Uh, that's not uncommon in our structure. And that's part of what creates the challenges for staff who are looking to grow their careers, but it's also part of what, um, what makes it challenging for us to ensure that we have consistency from one department to another. Uh, some of that is built up on, on legacy. You know, this is just the work that the last person in the role did. And so this is what the job description is. Uh, and some of that is because we've, we've had needs or we've, we've grown needs in, in certain areas over time. So we definitely have to go through the, the exercise of ensuring that we're, uh, we're capturing the right information about the actual work that people are doing and assigning people appropriately based off of that uh, in conjunction with uh, the, the different uh, levels of leadership and, and the staff in some instances as well um, throughout the organization. Um, I realize that we've got about five minutes left on the hour and, and do want to make sure that we have a little bit of time to talk to you about um, how to stay engaged with the CPM project, but there are just a couple of questions that have come into the chat that I really want to make sure that people um, uh, have answers to. The very the first of which is um, is whether or not these slides this has come up a couple of times whether or not these slides will be available and or the recording of the session. Absolutely, uh, it is our intention to, to make the session available to those who are not able to attend and or to you all to, I guess, sit through again, if you like, uh, and, and wanna make sure that um, people understand our website will house a lot of that information. I won't kind of getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but just know that, yes, we intend to, to post the recordings. We're gonna go through each of the five scheduled sessions uh, and then post, uh, post one at the end. Uh, 
uh, of those sessions so that you have um, the the one that's that uh, that's the most comprehensive for, for the purposes of viewing. Uh, and then the other question that came up in there is about reducing pay. And, and it's important for everyone to know that this exercise, this project is not intended to reduce pay. Um, it, it, this is about getting people on the right jobs uh, and making sure that, that people have the ability to understand their role in the organization. It is, is not about reducing pay. So just wanted to make those two really important points. I'll turn it back over to Sonia to walk through the, the remaining slides. All right, thanks, Dan. I uh, just wanted to mention again, a few ways that you can stay engaged with the project even beyond uh, the forum here today. Uh, first of all, again, we encourage you to invite others to join us uh, for future forums, um, but you can provide us feedback on what you thought about today's forum. Uh, we'll be sending a survey link um, email to all the registrants um, where you can provide us uh, your, your feedback on, on the forum from today. Uh, we also encourage you to explore the con the content because again, this will be provided as a recording. If you have an opportunity to go back and listen to it again, you may pick up on some things um, that uh, have, you have further questions about. So feel free to take a listen to the, to the um, recording again. Um, we'll be posting it on our website. Um, and also feel free to come to another forum. Um, if you think it'll be valuable to you to possibly hear the information again, to possibly hear answers to different questions than maybe the ones that were posed today, um, feel free to join us for another forum um, because each one will have a slightly different focus. While we focused much of this one on giving you an overview of the project, um, we'll try to have a different theme to each one. So in the future, we'll be telling you uh, more focused uh, information about that job structure and the compensation philosophy. Take out, you can also check out the website. A lot of great resources are on there. Um, we have project summary there. Um, we have more information about the project scope and the major phases. Um, again, as Dan mentioned, if you want to know who all the different project committee members are, maybe you're interested on who's involved um, from your particular departments or areas, uh, we do have a list of all the different project committee members there. We also have a CPM glossary there, um, which helps you to kind of learn some of the key words and phrases that are really key to this project. Some of them may be words that you've already heard um, associated with U of R compensation program, but some of them are new because we're trying to do a lot of new things here with our structure and with our program. And so as, as the project grows and as the project rolls out, we continue to add to that glossary. So check that out as well. Uh, we also post our FAQs there. So some of the things, many of the things that you've submitted here today, um, though we may not have time to answer them here, we do continue to post um, FAQs on our website as well. Great, thank you, Sonia. So that brings us to the top of the hour and certainly appreciate everyone's participation in today's session and, and absolutely look forward to having additional uh, forums that, uh, that we welcome your participation in as well. So thank you, everyone. Thank you.